On August 3rd, there was a new eruption in Iceland. In this video, Professor of Geology Oliver Ingolfsson, who is also my dad, will tell us everything he knows about the current eruption. Professor Ingolfsson visited the volcano on August 12th to record this video, nine days after the eruption started. This eruption is a bit of a continuation from the eruption last year that started on March 19th that we have covered extensively on this channel. So if you have not seen those videos, I highly recommend you watch them first to get the full picture of the volcanic situation in Iceland. Without further delay, I'm gonna let Professor of Geology Oliver Ingolfsson take over the rest of the video. Please enjoy. The eruption here in Meraldalir started on the 3rd of August. The eruption fissure is a little bit to the north of the Geldingadali volcano, but it's a part of the same system. So this is an ongoing chapter in the Faradalsfjall fires. In the beginning, the eruptive fissure was about 300 meters, but it has shortened and now the main eruption is on a single crater, some little uh, eruption going on, uh, a little bit to the north of the main crater, but mostly on a single crater. In the beginning, the lava flow was in the order of about 30 cubic meters per second, which is much larger, up to five times larger or more than when the uh, Geltingadal eruption started. The lava flow has gone down somewhat, uh, the last estimate says it's about 18 cubic meters per second, but we haven't been able to uh, evaluate it for a, for a few days, so we don't really know how much is coming up right now. But it's a beautiful uh, eruption. It's emitting lots of lava. The lava flow is spreading and filling this valley. And if it continues, we will have flow, lava flow probably to the south and that might threaten the road, the southern coastal road, but we'll see about that. Now, as you can probably see, I'm wearing a gas mask around my neck. It's not only lava that comes up, there's an enormous amount of gases. About 25,000 tons of carbon dioxide are coming up, sulfur dioxide and uh, also fluorine. And these gases are quite dangerous. You need to be prepared with gas meters and with the gas masks. Now you can see that the lava that flows from the crater, it doesn't really flow directly to the front of the lava stream. It collects in a big pool. And from time to time, this pool empties or flows out of this pool and towards the edge of the lava stream. Lava is also flowing at depths, so the lava crusts over, but it's still molten below the crust. It can actually move quite long distances, hundreds of meters uh, below the, uh, the crust and then suddenly break out at the front. This is the reason why it can be very dangerous to be uh, in front of the lava when it's approaching. Uh, lava can suddenly break out and go a few tens of meters in, a, in an instant, which makes this quite a dangerous environment. People have to be careful when they are close to a, an active volcano and close to a uh, lava that is still flowing. It's an interesting question. What is the significance of these eruptions? We know that in the 10th to 13th century there were a number of volcanic eruptions from Reykjanes. We call them the Reykjanes fires. So there would be eruption every 10th, 50th, 20th year. And then it all quieted down. For 800 years, very little happened until 2020 in Geltingadalir. Uh, that eruption went on for about half a year and it was not a large eruption, but it was a significant one. After it stopped, there was a period of relative quiet, and then land started to rise and uh, signs of unrest. Until then, on the 3rd of August, this eruption started. It was more powerful in the beginning than the start of the Geltingadalir eruption. And uh, it's been going on now for almost 10 days. How long will it continue? We don't know. It might continue for a few weeks or even a few months and then it might quiet down again and and then we might have another eruption and this might be ongoing for tens of years or maybe even hundreds of years who knows maybe the coming 10 to 15 generations of Icelanders will uh, experience uh, eruptions here on Reykjanes 
only the future will show. So it's an interesting story, it's a very exciting story, and we will continue to monitor it. Early in the morning on the 21st of August, no volcanic activity could be observed anymore. The eruption has stopped. If this is final or if it will continue, it remains to be seen. Now, these two eruptions in 2021 and in 2022, which we now have started to call the Fagradalsfjall fires, they have combined produced about maybe 0 0.3, 0.4 cubic kilometers of lava. And they cover together approximately six square kilometers. Now, how much would that be, six square kilometers? It would cover probably between 550 and 600 soccer fields. So that's uh, quite something. Now, these two eruptions, these are not big eruptions. They are small. Perhaps the eruption will start again. Perhaps we'll only have a pause for a few months and it will all start again. There is lots of lava or of magma below Faradarsjall or below this part of Reykjanes. Earth scientists are now monitoring this area very closely, see if land begins to rise, which means that there's an inflation going on because more magma is streaming to the area, or if it will slowly subside. Crystal movements are being monitored. Earthquakes are telltale signs of something happening, and it's very closely observed by radar images and GPS points. Only the future will tell, but the most probable chain of events is is that we will have renewed volcanic activity. This is not probably not over. This will probably continue. But if it will be in a few months or in a few years, only the future will tell. But with this eruption, we say to be continued.